Today we are going to take a look at the P1S, Bamboo Lab's latest 3D printer. In this video we are going to take a look at how to upgrade the P1P to a P1S, I will talk about how difficult it was and what issues I ran into and finally we will take a look at the differences between the P1S, the P1P and the X1 Carbon. And we will also take a look at the print quality and the print speeds. Although the P1S is basically an upgraded P1P, so the print quality of the P1S is pretty much on par with the P1P. But the speeds are slightly different. But more on that later. The P1S was sent to me for this review. I did not buy it. Alright, let's take a look at my P1P first. I upgraded it with the Vision Enclosure and already printed a lot of ABS parts with it. In fact, most of my Warum parts were printed with this P1P. This custom enclosure cost me around $50 to make and while it works fine, there were some issues I had with it. For example, the PTFE tube got loose from time to time and the cable chain fixture on the print head fell off pretty much every print, which led to the cable chain rubbing against the carbon rods, which isn't good. The upgrade kit to upgrade the P1P to the P1S costs around $160, but it also comes with a lot of stuff. The upgrade kit comes in lots of different packages. Each package is labeled and contains the parts for a separate step. The labeling on the packages was great for sorting the parts, but some labels were a bit confusing. This label, for example, simply said heavy. Thanks for letting me know, I guess. But after opening it, it became clear that this was the heavy duty cable for the tool head. I was also searching for a manual at first, but then I realized that all of the packages have a QR code on them that will send you to the Bamboo Lab Wiki where you can find the official instructions on how to upgrade your P1P. The online instructions come with a nice assembly video that helped me a lot, even though some parts of the assembly process were missing, but more on that later. Overall, everything was nicely packaged and mostly well labeled. Let's move on to assembly. Before we start the assembly process, however, we first need to print the part for the carbon filtration. The guide will warn us to print this part before we start the assembly process right at the beginning. I still missed it somehow and had to print it later on. The part is also surprisingly hard to print on a 3D printer. It has a lot of overhangs and the best orientation requires a lot of supports that need to be removed later on. First I had to remove the front panel of the P1P. This was fairly easy, just unscrew all of the screws and then lift the panel up. But there is a PCB glued to the panel that you have to remove. And this was fairly hard for me. It is the Wi-Fi antenna PCB, I think, and it took me quite some time to get it off of the panel. The rest of the steps in the video were pretty straightforward. Install the side panels, install the filtration, and install all of the additional fans. Although in the video it tells you that if you want to install the fan for the main board, you have to remove the cooler. I didn't find it to be necessary. There is more than enough space between the cooler and the side panel for the fan to go through, as you can see right here. Installing the auxiliary part cooling fan was also pretty easy. It simply goes right on one of the side panels. Installing the exhaust carbon filter is also pretty straightforward, as long as you have the 3D printed part. I especially love this little opening here in the chamber of the printer. This gives you easy access to the carbon filter, so you can easily replace it without the need to open the P1S up. The P1S also comes with a new back cover, so once you have everything hooked up to your main board, you can put on the new back cover. And everything already looks much cleaner. The final steps of the guide were installing the new front cover, which now says P1S, and installing the door. And here's where I made a pretty big mistake. After installing the front cover, I realized that one of the door hinges was stuck behind it. A little warning in the assembly guide would be great for, well, idiots like me. I had to remove the front cover, move the hinge forward and then reinstall the front cover again. And after that I could finally install the door. And this is where the official guide ends. 
but there are still a few steps left before you can start the first print with your new P1S. You have to install the new heavy duty tool head cable and the cable chain. I couldn't find a guide on the official Bamboo Labs wiki that would explain how to actually do this. Luckily it wasn't all that hard to do. You just had to install this plastic piece in the top part of the printer and then connect the cable chain to it. And then finally just run the new cable through the cable chain to the main board. And with that the assembly of the P1S was finally done. Overall it took me around 40 minutes to convert the P1P to the P1S. And I'm not gonna lie, the P1S looks really nice. It looks really clean and it looks like an actual finished printer, not like the P1P. But what is the difference between the P1P and the P1S? Well, for one, the P1S is obviously an enclosed printer, so you can print ABS and ASA reliably on it. The P1S also has improved part cooling. This is thanks to the auxiliary part cooling fan that you can see right here. This allows the P1S to print slightly faster than the P1P. The actual speed difference however is very little. The actual speed difference comes from the layer time. The layer time ensures that a printer won't move to a new layer before the underlying layer has cooled down enough so that the next layer can be printed on top of it. The auxiliary part cooling fan will make it so that the layer time can be set lower, which will effectively speed up the print, especially for smaller parts. And the final two differences between the P1P and the P1S are for one, the activated carbon filter and the cooling fan for the main board. The activated carbon filter is great for printing ABS for example, because ABS produces a lot of toxic fumes and the carbon filter will basically filter them, will get rid of them. Which is great because you don't have to think about that anymore when printing ABS. And you now might be thinking, well great, when the P1S can print all of these materials and can do all of that, then why should you even get an X1 carbon? And you are right, the P1S and the X1 Carbon have a lot of similarities. For example, they have the same build volume, the same speed, the same tool head and so on. But there are also a lot of differences. For example, the X1 Carbon comes with an all metal hot and with hardened steel, meaning it can print abrasive materials like nylon, carbon fiber materials and glass fiber materials. The X1 Carbon also comes with a hardened steel nozzle, which the P1S doesn't have. So the P1S can print PLA, ABS, PETG, ASA, PVA, PET and TPU, while the X1 Carbon can also print PA or nylon, PC, carbon and glass fiber filament and polymer. There is a link in the description to the written review of the P1S. There you will find tables that will show you the differences between the P1P and the P1S and the X1 Carbon, as well as a list of filaments that each of these printers can print. By the way, if you wanted to print abrasive filaments like nylon or carbon or glass fiber filaments with your P1S, then you can do so. All you have to do is buy a hardened steel nozzle and a hardened steel extruder kit from the official Bamboo Lab store and upgrade your P1S with that. But now let's take a look at the print quality of the P1S. And the print quality of the P1S is simply excellent. Parts are printed very fast, yet no artifacts from vibrations are visible on the surface of the print. Supports can be removed very easily without much residue left on the print. And even complex organic forms with steep overhangs of up to 80 degrees can be printed cleanly. The bridging capabilities of the P1S are also top notch. The printer can easily close gaps of up to 30 mm or more with some fine tuning. Here is a test print that I did with PLA. This is a giant tooth that I printed for a friend and as you can see it turned out perfectly. The surface finish of this print is simply amazing and you can see I had to print it with a lot of supports but all of them came off very cleanly and very easily. I also printed these tentacles in ASA and as you can see there are some issues right here where the overhangs are but other than that it turned out great. 
and as I mentioned before, a lot of the parts for my all-white Voron were printed on the P1S in ABS. And those parts also turned out amazingly. Let's also take a look at the power consumption and the noise of the P1S. So the P1S has a power consumption of around 160 watts to 260 watts on average. But it can also go up to 300 watts occasionally, depending on what you print and how fast you print. P1S is surprisingly not as loud as the P1P. Where the P1P was an average around 60 decibels while printing, the P1S is only at around 55 decibels. As a comparison, a whisper is at about 30 decibels and a normal conversation would be at around 60 decibels. So what are the main pros and cons of the P1S? Let's start with the cons. The upgrade kit is not very beginner friendly. Someone who's new to 3D printing will have a bit of a hard time upgrading their P1P to a P1S. Secondly, there are the proprietary parts. The Bamboo Lab ecosystem is pretty much proprietary. You can't just take a regular nozzle and install it on a P1P or a P1S. The P1S uses X1 Carbon presets. This isn't usually an issue on its own, but if you upgrade your P1P to a P1S with the upgrade kit, then the bamboo slicer still thinks that you are printing on a P1P, so it will give you an error message every time you start a print. This really is more annoying than an actual problem though. And finally, the P1S has no touchscreen. While I don't really care about that, it might be an issue for some people, so I want to mention it here. And now let's get to the pros. The P1S is slightly faster than the P1P, while still having excellent print quality. The P1S can print ABS and ASA, which the P1P could not. The P1S is just like the P1P, also very reliable. I printed literally hundreds and hundreds of hours on the P1P and I never had any major issues. The P1P was my go-to printer whenever I wanted to print something for a project. And the P1S will be just as good and just as reliable as the P1S because it is basically an enclosed P1P. The final two pros are there is an upgrade kit for the P1P available. So you don't have to buy the printer new as a whole, you can simply upgrade your P1P to a P1S, just as I did in this video. And finally, the P1S is compatible with the AMS, the Automatic Material System from Bamboo Lab. The AMS allows for multicolor printing and is probably one of the most reliable multicolor printing options on the market right now. Overall, I can highly recommend the P1S. It is a very capable printer, it is fast, reliable, and it is very easy to use. If you are looking for a good alternative to the P1S, however, then I can recommend the K1 from Creality as an alternative. It isn't as fast as the P1S, and it doesn't have any carbon filtration, but it is a lot cheaper than the P1S, and is also a very capable machine. Although I can't say that it is as reliable as the P1S because I haven't run as many prints on it as I have on my P1P. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. And you can find all of the links to the prints that I used in this video as well as links to the materials I used in this video in the description.